Hi, I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and I am a Northern California collage artist. I create all of the papers that I use for my collages on the gel plate. I create papers specific for water, for greenery, for landscapes, for flowers. Um, and when I am making those papers, I keep in mind color, value, and appearance, texture how it's gonna look in my collage painting. So this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how I make papers for water in the landscape, just one way. And I'm gonna use some unusual materials. So let's go check it out. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to use some grass that I got on my walk. You could also use reeds, palm fronds, bamboo brand, uh, leaves, uh, anything that, that kind of gives you sort of a long, kind of organic striation, we're going to use this to create um, some paper for water for landscape. So here's a little piece that's thicker in there. This sort of thing, if you have palm fronds that are this thickness, get creative with this. These have some uh, seed pods on them, and I'm not sure if I should pull them off or not, because what I'm looking for is these long sort of lines without the pods. Um, but maybe we can arrange them on there without it, or maybe the seed pods will add to it. So some sort of reeds or long grass, we're going to run it horizontal so that it creates sort of the uh, highlight effect on water. Um, and as always, we're going to start from light to dark. So we're going to put down first our, um, our sparkle color. So because it's a sparkle color, I've got some iridescent bronze. Um, and then it depends on what kind of water you're doing. So if you're doing the ocean in Key West, then you're going to really want to have teal at the beach, a tropical beach. But if you are doing a pond that could be kind of greenish brownish, then um, you might, or a river, then you might be looking at um, the burnt umber light and a little bit of turquoise thalo. Now I've um, painted in plain air for many years at the Wakaiba River, and that river is sort of a brownish greenish color. So that's the color palette that I'm gonna go with today. But understand that this technique applies to any color palette. If you wanna do fauvist color water and make it orange, or if you wanna do it like a river, and realistic or whatever you want to do. It's the pattern that we're really looking for. So we're going to start out with the light shimmer color. So I'm going to use the iridescent bronze. And in that, I'm going to put a little bit, a little tiny bit, a couple of small drops of the turquoise thalo. I'm going to roll it out on my gel plate. And whenever I'm mixing color, I want to swirl the brayer to blend, get it really blended and then roll it out. So stirring it up with the brayer, swirling and then rolling. That's gonna mix your color more completely when you want that complete mixed effect. Okay, so that's the bronze with a little bit of the turquoise thalo. So it's sort of a even slightly more greenish bronze. And I'm gonna pull that print on a piece of rice paper that I have on a roll here. Smooth side goes down to the plate and this definitely has one side that's much smoother than the other. So I'm gonna, Put that in. This is exactly the width of the gel plate, this roll, which is kind of nice. You don't have any, any excess white around the edges. So I'm starting with this solid print, just solid print of my sparkly color. And this is um, got some divots and marks in it because my gel plate has um, cracks and divots in it, but I'm not really worried about that, those little white spots. Um, uh, the gel plate doesn't stay pristine for long, and I use mine a lot, so there's some variations in that um, color. So the next step is then to make the water color. So I'm going to use the thalo, the turquoise thalo again, but I'm going to add some of the brown into it, the burnt umber light, so I can sort of make it like a, a river or a lake color. And then I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna swirl that around to stir it. I didn't clean my brayer off, so I'm gonna have a little bit of that bronze in this mixture as well, which will be really nice. Just what was on the brayer. So I'm stirring it, swirling it, and then rolling it out. So that's more green than it is brown. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the burnt umber, or actually let me come into a burnt sienna so it's a little lighter and mix that in and see what happens. We can get this more of like a brownish phthalo blue.
There we go. That's a little more greenish brownish, kind of a lake color. I might even add a little bit more burnt sienna. Now, we don't want to get too much paint on this plate, um, but I am kind of looking for a brownish green color, and this is sort of predominantly green right now. This is a little better. It takes a experimentation and practice and play. You might make six or eight papers that you don't like before you come up with one that you do, but the key is to remember what you did when you make the one that you do. So I'm going to take the grass and I'm going to lay it sort of organically across to create sort of my water lines. So I'm going to try and get them relatively straight. Like this one is bent and I do want it to be relatively straight across. Um, and then I'm going to sort of stagger them. I am kind of letting these uh, seed pods hang off the end so I can get more of the lines. Here's the thicker one that I have. Now, if you if if it's winter months and you don't have access to grass, you can always think about playing with maybe some string in this way or getting some silk flowers um, from your local craft store or some household items. Maybe you've got a dried flower bunch, you know, in your in your house. Uh, the idea is just to get some horizontal lines that are organic and not rigid. So that's why I like the grass or the palm fronds especially. Now this grass is dried up a bit. I, I um, picked it a couple days ago. Um, it has different properties when it's dry than when it's fresh. So you can expect different results. And again, it's about experimenting. So now I've got my nice horizontal sort of water line shapes. And you can be particular about this like I am, or you could just toss it all on there and see what happens. There's no right or wrong way to do this. All right, so now I'm gonna take that highlight color, that bronze sheet, and I'm gonna put it right over. And this grass is way more three-dimensional than a stencil. So this is where you need to use the heels of the palm of your hand to really, and your fingertips, to really press the paper down through the grass so that you get a good print. And when you have too much paint on, things start sliding around. And that may be what's gonna happen to me here because I, I did add quite a bit of paint. Um, but I'm gonna run my fingertips sort of the length of the grass. And before I take the paper off, I'm going to give a peek to see what kind of uh, contact I have on the plate and if I need more pressure. So I'm gonna lift it up from the corner and I really like how that's looking, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get my fingers in between all the stems so I can get them all to print. I'll take another peek. So here we go. So here you have a really nice sheet for water. You've got your highlight, you've got your movement, your motion, you've got your sort of your undulating wave shapes, and you're not going to tear this out in one big chunk. You'll, you'll come along here and tear long slivers, but you've got some beautiful watery effect here in those slivers simply by using grass or reeds on your gel plate, starting with your light sparkle highlight color, and then adding your darker color second.